be number one until they discovered the border collie was pretty smart. Yeah. And the poodle, poodle in German, it's not a French poodle, it's a German dog. Poodle, the word poodle in German means puddle, which meant the poodle was a water, yeah, was the used day, in hunting waterfowl. The other day I was out, it was raining out. Yeah. It was raining cats and dogs, man. I stepped in a poodle. No, and they, they come. Bring the balls! Yeah. Jesus. So corny, but. They come teacup, toy, uh. miniature, and standard, the big guys. Now, standard, the standard yeah. poodles are used as guard dogs in Europe, you know. No, I'm, like I'm not shepherd. making this up. And I heard they're, they're quite uh, effective. They're not, they're not wimpy. <laughs> Very smart dog, and they don't shed. It's kind of hypoallergenic for. Well, they shave most of their hair off. Even if you don't, they really, they look they like the really don't. They really don't like shed. I mean, from I, this is what I was told by poodle owners. You know, but uh, poodle. Uh, poodle. Yeah, they don't. You don't feed them strudel, poodles. Yeah, that was corny. That was a little. Bit. Anyway, really let corny. us. I know we digressed here. Let us sink our teeth. I digress. Into these readings. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? That's what I said, Cabbage Head. I always loved the Cabbage family. You know, Brussels sprouts, kale, cauliflower, broccoli. You know what I mean? Broccoli, very good for you if you if you like it. The cruciferous yeah. family. Yeah. Why they call it cruciferous is beyond me. Because the vine that they on the floor of ground, they look like a cross. That's so why. Did Cruciferous. They, do they worship it like the kudzu? Oh, by the way, a by lot the, of people by the way, worship a lot of stuff. There was this uh, right-wing religious organization on Facebook, and, and did you know what they had at the on the first page? They had the picture of the kudzu uh, uh, plant in the in the shape of a cross that was found in I think North or South Carolina. And people worship it because it was shaped like a cross. They do not understand that the cross is not a Christian symbol. No, Jesus died on a stake, a pole, a, stake, a, tree, a, pole, a tree, a tree. Yeah. The tree is mentioned uh, several times in the Bible that he was crucified on a tree. So all those fancy uh, crosses made into jewelry by the Orthodox uh, churches of Europe and the... Hang uh, it from your neck. Hanging mm -hmm. from the neck, like uh, the Catholic Look how church. religious I am. So that's all, that all stems from a man's mind, right? Uh, an artist's imagination. Well, it goes back to uh, <coughs> somewhere <coughs> around 325 and Emperor Constantine. Remember, he had a dream of the cross and that he would win the battle. So he turned the country over to being Christian. That was the Holy Roman Empire, right? That's great. Eventually, the, the Muslims took back Turkey, and then it became Istanbul. Turkey? Again. No, well, that, well, that was, was part of the, uh, well, the Ottoman Empire and the Holy Roman Empire included the, uh, where Istanbul is right now. There were four ruling empires. The Chaldean. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the uh, Ottoman Turk or the Persian or whatever the hell it was, the second one, the Greek and the Roman. And Daniel had a vision of these four Daniel's ruling visions. empires. Yes. And in the vision, uh, later on in the end time and beyond, a big rock comes down from heaven and breaks the last empire, the Roman Empire, in smithereen, into smithereens. The rock, of course, is Jesus' empire. When he becomes king of kings and lord of lords. Roman Empire deteriorated from within, kind of like the United States is doing now. Is doing now and uh, they, have, they had themselves to blame and then they were overrun and the Roman army lost to the uh, to Teutonic, uh, the barbarians of uh, <clears throat> Northern Europe, the Otto the Great, the Huns, 
like Attila. The, the barbarians, the uh, Visigoths. Visigoths, the Goths, the Visigoths. The, Bar the Visigoths, the barbarians. Yeah, the they had the in, in, in that's uh, the deadly wound in France. There there was a tribe called the Franks. Frankies, they, really, the, and then is the Frankies Huns. and the Germans in the city. Don't forget the Huns. Hey, Attila, Attila. That's right. Remember Respect what Attila. Men, remember what his men called him. Um. Honey. Ha <laughs> Hold on. Hi, honey. <laughs> Okay, let us sink your teeth, man. Sink your teeth. All right, now in in uh, New Jersey, we have such things called county blue laws. Yes. Where yeah. you cannot buy and sell on Sunday. Yeah, retail is closed, like our county. Correct. So this letter is in regard to that, and it is also in speaking about religion. The writer is subject to the same misunderstanding as those who cry that we must keep Christ in Christmas. No one is trying to force Christians to remove Jesus from that holiday or to shop on Sunday. The issue is whether Christians have the right to prevent the rest of us and there are more and more of us in the vastly Judeo-Christian society from enjoying the holiday as we see fit and shopping when we want. Since some do not believe in the Christian God or do not consider the Bible as the director of our lives, they do his believers no harm in spending Sunday in any legitimate way they wish. And the suggestion that in so doing we lose God's blessing does not, in light of the fact that believers do not fare any better than we unblessed, cause us concern. Let the religious of all faiths conduct their lives as they think fit. Let the non-religious do the same. Hmm. Well, we've had blue laws. They tried to, uh, they tried to do away with the blue laws uh, uh, some time ago or whatever in New Jersey. Didn't work. You know what I say? Didn't work. You know what I say? Let people in retail have a, a, at least one decent day off during the week where they can spend quality time with their families. Let them have their Sundays off. Yeah, That's what I say. The deeper point there is that it is Christians behind the blue laws. Um. Okay? And being Christians, they, they believe that it is because of the first day Sabbath. I know, I know. Which, which is, is not the true Sabbath. No, it's Saturday. So it's all a garbage in the first place even being a religious idea. I it's not a Christian. I mentioned Saturday being the, the seventh day and the true s Sabbath, Sabbath to somebody and the guy said to me, oh, oh, uh, are you Jewish? He asked me, are you Jewish? No, it has asked, nothing to no, do with No, no, I'm not Jewish. It's, it's, it's the, a fact. It's in the Bible. It's a fact. It's, it's in the, uh, I'm sure it's in the, um, um, the Jewish, um, not Jewish. Uh, uh, Jews are it's only. Old, it's Old Testament. Jews are only one tribe. But it's Old Testament. No kidding. It's one of the laws that yes. Jesus gave in Leviticus. Right. Okay. It's the seventh day was the Sabbath. Yeah. He finished his work, and well, on the seventh day he rested. Yeah. Now jumping. Not the first. Jumping ahead into modern technology times that we have now. Retail people have a miserable job as it is, so if they have every Sunday off, if Sunday happens to be a good quality day to spend with your family because office people are usually off on the weekends. And if they have to work nine times out of ten, 
but retail people have to work Saturday because that's you're looking the busiest day a, of the week. You're looking at it from a different perspective entirely. What you're saying is the blue law was created by the religious right. That's correct. By the right wingers. Okay, that's correct. I, I, it has nothing to do with resting from your labor and etc. like that. No, no, no. It's just that every you know your your family's usually home, you know, and and retail is a very underpaid, overworked, miserable career. But looking at it from another point it's not of view, a career, really. Yeah. Looking at it from another point of view, uh, if they worked on Sunday, these stores would have to hire more people. Yeah. You got the people working five days a week, and then you got the people working on right. the weekends. And there, are, and people. So that would be good for the economy. And people go out and shop on Sunday, just like they would on a Saturday. Correct. What the only poor, well, then they would get a couple of days off during the week, which has their pluses. Like yeah, all, every everybody's open if you want to get stuff done. But then again, most of the world that works in offices are working. So. <laughs> The Sorry. Muslim world works on Sunday. They do? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I know there's 24 hours in a day. It's just a county rule. One day is the same as any other, 24 hours per day. Uh, it's just that nobody is around. When you have a weekday off, a lot of your friends are most likely uh, but you're not talking, around. You're talk, you continuously talk at things from the individual point of view. Yes. And that's not what put these laws into effect. It was it was right wing fundamental. That's correct. Fundamentalist way of thinking. And they do it because they are wrong in their assumption. Okay. That that is the Sabbath day, the I, seventh, uh, the first okay. day. Okay. And it's not. That's I, up to. That's where Emperor <laughs> Constantine again got into the act. Okay. All right. They I agree. Put that. I agree. I agree. You're right. I mean, you're right, you're right. I know, but don't, you know, because uh, business doesn't care about your individual point of view. Yeah. They don't care if you're happy, right. thrilled, if you if you spend quality time with your family. That's right. If you get laid the night before. That's right. They just care about their stinking cash. If they did, if they did care, do you think we'd have sweatshops in China and India and Bangladesh and etc.? No, we would not. Hey, the sweatshops okay. in Latin America. And in America. In Latin America. Okay. There, yeah, in South America, I think, shockingly, I think there's one in Argentina, which <laughs> I'm surprised, because I always thought Argentina and Chile were, and Uruguay were sort of Europeanized. Latin okay, yeah, countries. after their dictators, those countries were all run by dictators. Now they are. Well, I don't know what the... The woman in uh, Argentina, Francesca, or uh, uh, what she is. Political you know? corruption is worldwide. You know, human sure nature. in the United States too, eh? Human nature is worldwide. Uh, and sin is worldwide. And the forces of evil operate worldwide. Yes, but in America, these these right-wing religious not Christians, so-called. Yeah. They believe that they are not sinners, but you are. And they are doing God's work in protecting society from you, you baby killer, you, you demon possessed secular humanist. So they could say anything they want. Yeah. It's like it's kind of like the uh, uh, the courts of uh, uh, Puritan. Uh, um, the Puritans of uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts, the Salem witch trials. Yeah. You know, it, do it doesn't matter if the poor women had counsel representing them. It's like, what was the one about? What they throw you in the water, and if you drowned, you or something. If you're you innocent, floated, or wait a minute. Floated. It, it, yeah, if you if you if you sank or floated. Yeah, but didn't they attach weights to you or something? So in other words, you could never float. You were guilty no matter what. So man. so the court the court trial was corrupt. Yeah. No kidding. It was based on word of mouth. Uh, uh, it was one based woman's, on mental illness. Yeah, one one person's opinion versus the the uh, the guilty. I mean the um, the person charged. Okay with being a witch. And remember, at that time, 
the best minds of the country, yeah. etc., believed uh, that witches rode to the Black Sabbath on brooms. Can we all say mental illness? You don't think rampant. You don't think witches can fly? No. Do you believe in flying carpets uh, in the Middle East? No. What about the Indian rope trick? The, where you no. Kinda, you don't think they exist? Sisyphus couldn't even push a rope up a hill. <laughs> let alone one going up, you know, anti-gravity here. Come no, on. Sisyphus uh, was a boulder, I think, right? No, it was a rope, I think. Well, well, maybe it was a boulder, but well, it's the that, same... Well, that's where they got the term sissy squat for, and bodybuilding <laughs> from, from yeah. Sisyphus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was the same idea. That's, that's the point. Okay. Wonderful. UFO buffs and believers in alien encounters are celebrating the CIA's clearest acknowledgement yet of the existence of Area 51. Now they say, uh, people are saying it's supposedly moved, it's not there anymore. <laughs> the top secret <coughs> Cold War test site that has been the subject of the elaborate conspiracy theories for decades the recently declassified documents have set the tinfoil hat crowd abuzz. Though there's no mention in the papers of UFO crashes, black-eyed extraterrestrials, or staged moon landings. You know, there are gift shops in the deserts of Nevada that sell UFO souvenirs, uh, Based on the little area. aliens with the big eyes. Yeah, with the yeah, the big eyes and the and the uh, the plum. I mean the eggplant-shaped heads, <laughs> the bulb heads. Yeah, they're uh, they're making money off Area 51. But uh. Audrey Hewins, an Oxford, Maine woman, who runs a support group for people like her, who believe they have been contacted by extraterrestrials said she suspects the CIA is moving closer to disclosing there are space aliens on Earth. I'm thinking that they are probably testing the waters now to see how mad people get about the big lie and the cover. -up. For a long time, U.S. government officials hesitated to acknowledge even the existence of Area 51. The CIA history released on Thursday not only refers to Area 51 by name and describes some of the aviation activities that took place there, but locates the Air Force Base on a map along the dry Groom Lake bed. I'm not urinating, I'm pouring my tea. You know, I don't think I don't think people would get angry in this day and age about the government keeping secrets. I think it's well known that they, they know the government always keeps secrets. And, um, you know, I don't think they would get, like, re upset. I think they would go, oh, well, that's what that's what we expected right all along, that but, the government kept it hidden. But, in the constitutional makeup of this country... They might panic. I don't know. Yeah. We the people are in charge. Now, how can we be in charge well, they and don't. make correct decisions if we do not have all the information? Because most Americans uh, get their information from, like, primetime media, you know, the, so the, why they see on and, and nobody tells you in the American media that we, the people, own the country. So why aren't we given the truthful information then? How can we make yeah, this? True. We're not because those people who are elected think of themselves as elites. Yeah. And they are separate from us. Hey. My grandmother was brainwashed. She used to say all the time, can't fight City Hall. That means what can you do? Don't even don't what even can wait. You do? Don't even try. Don't even waste your time. That's correct. Go along to get along. Go along to get Go along. Go rock the boat. Aren't those the uh, uh, adaptive supporters? Yes, they are. And are they also sycophants, or is that a different... No, sycophants is more of a deliberate 
thing. You mean an apple polisher? An ass kisser. An ass kisser, yeah. brown noser? But uh, adaptive supporters are just... Very passive people, yeah, right? very passive people. They don't want to make waves. Like, then, like, like those idiots on Facebook that gave me a hard time because our show is so outspoken. Why do you listen to people like that? We are rude. We are negative. They, they, We're negative. In their criticism, yeah. has any one of them mentioned anything about the content of the show? No, they, they're very shallow in their nitpicking. Thank you. So they are not to be listened to, are they? They do not know what they're talking about. They don't listen. They don't really focus on the content of the show. That's correct. And I, and I, and I, I showed you something your a brother posted. <gasps> My brother? Uh, the other day. I uh, didn't yeah. see it. Yeah, he posted it on the Progressive Hard Hitting Truth group. Oh. Is uh, he a member? Yeah. Yeah, wow. he posted something. Uh, of course, defending the right wings. Right wingers. Oh, jeez. So, uh, Oh geez, the guy gets the newsletter for I don't know the last twenty some years, and he has all these ingrained right wing uh, fixations. I think it has something to do with the Bible. The Bible. Bible. And you know, well, how, if, if, if <laughs> you know how we're always proving that conservatives do not know the God of the Bible. Yeah. Well, he was kind of. I think he was kind of defending them. <laughs> Well, then he should know better than that, because if some right winger is going to come against Dr. Bill and debate or argue the Bible, he's a loser. Yeah. He's a loser of the biggest type. Yeah, we're talking about Mr. Robert Eisenman, the brother of uh, the Reverend well, I don't Dr. know if it's him, because I don't know what he would, you know, want to... Well, he posted Post something. About, you know, it, it was a, it was a typical, like teabagger, answer. It, it mm -hmm. didn't it didn't sound like it holded much water, yeah. if any. Well, yeah. But you know, brother or no brother or whatever, if there's somebody that's postulating right wing crap, and he wants to, uh, you know, know what the Bible actually says. You know, he ain't going to learn it from anybody else but me. No. I mean, there's other people that know, but, you know, I think, in a face-to-face. -face. I think there are people face -face. who, I think there are some people out there who deliberately go out of their way to disagree with you in, in a public uh, forum. forum. I think it's out of ego that they, they, they want to stick their two cents in, even though they have nothing to contribute. Correct. A lot of people just want to be... And I'm using this word in quotes, right. They want to dominate you. They want to be right over you. Yes. Even though they're giving you wrong information. Look at me. I exist. I'm here. And I'm making my point. Yeah. Meanwhile, the point is at the top of their heads. Exactly. Yeah. It also talks about some cool planes. Though none of them are saucer shaped. No? What about sausage shaped? I like sausages. There are some UFOs that they claim are sausage shaped, you know. Really? Yeah. You shaped like a dildo? Or just sausage shaped? You know, there's... Or cigar shaped? There's a pa there's a passages in Ezekiel. I believe it's... Don't quote me here. Ezekiel 1-1 one, one or whatever. It speaks about wheels within wheels. Really? Like gears? Almost? Wheels within it doesn't the wheel. actually say they are physical things, but these spirit beings that are with them, the wheels go with them when they go, and etc. 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 And the and and there's it describes like you would like a spaceship with a lot of windows. Oh, like Lights. almost almost like a spiritual chariot that they ride in. Well, I don't know if they were. But see, that's that's the point. That's the point. You don't know whether you're talking... If you're talking spirit beings, why are they doing things in a physical vehicle? Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm just putting that out there. That that should be looked at a little more. The wheels and the wheels and, and all that uh, stuff that's wheels in his... Wheels go around and round. Uh, 
<coughs> George Washington's universities and national security archive used a public records request to obtain the CIA history of one of Area 51's most secret Cold War projects, the U-2 spy plane program. National Security Archive senior fellow Jeffrey Richelson first reviewed the history in 2002, but all mentions of the country's most mysterious military base had been redacted. So he requested the history again in 2005, hoping for more information. Sure enough, he received a version a few weeks ago with the mentions of Area 51 restored. The report is unlikely to stop the conspiracy theorists. The 407-page document still contains many redactions. And who's to say those missing sections don't involve little green men? No, they're not necessarily green, but... You know. It's not the first time. The government has acknowledged the existence of the super-secret 8,000-square-mile installation. Presidents Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, referred to the location near Groom Lake in insisting on continued secrecy. And other government references date back to the 1960s. But Richelson, as well as those who are convinced, the truth is out there, are taking the document as a sign of loosening secrecy about the government's activities in the Nevada desert. The site is known as Area 51 among UFO aficionados because that was the base's designation on old Nevada test site maps. The CIA history reveals that officials renamed it Paradise Ranch. Hmm. What? That's the, the, ain't that a place where the prostitutes are at Paradise Ranch? That's the Mustang Ranch. Mustang Ranch, and baby. Bunny. Um, bunny. The, well, yeah. The, the, yeah. There's a there's a Mustang Ranch, and um, yeah. The bunny Hutch. No, no. Yeah, they're out. Yeah, there, yeah. They're, they're outside of of the city of Las Vegas. They're like uh, on the outskirts. They're in the in, you know, in, the, in the suburbs, in the desert, or whatever. Suburbs. You can't you can't have advertised um, bordellos inside of the city of Las Vegas. You can't have that, and I, I don't think they really allow street walkers in Las Vegas either. It's all you know indoors. Um, High tone, baby. High -tone. Yeah. Oh, they're very expensive, from what yeah. I hear. Ooh. These uh, health department. Regulated uh, legal bordellos are uh, are quite pricey. To try to lure skilled workers who can still be seen over Las Vegas flying to and from the site on unmarked planes. Beginning with the U-2 in the 1950s, the base has been the testing ground for a host of top secret aircraft, including the SR-71 Blackbird. Yeah. F-117A Stealth Fighter and the B-2 Stealth Fighter. Some believe the base's Stranglovian hangars also contain alien vehicles. Evidence from the Roswell incident. The alleged 1947 crash Mexico. of a UFO in New Mexico and extraterrestrial corpses. Yeah. And the people that were visited by the government in, in New Mexico that were told to Shut up. dummy up or else. The CIA Shut history up. mentions an unexpected side effect of the high-flying plane. Eyewitnesses were talking about. Yeah. A tremendous increase in reports of unidentified flying objects. Unidentified Frying objects? Flying. Oh, flying. I am not Chinese. Fry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <coughs> the report notes 
that the U-2 and ox cart planes, which flew higher than civilians believed possible, accounted for half of the UFO sightings during the 1950s and 60s. This makes a good back scratch, too. A likely story, said Stanton Friedman, a self-described ufologist from Canada. The notion that the U-2 explains most sightings at the time is utter rock and baloney. What? Rock and baloney? Rock! Oh, rot. R-O-T. Rot. Rot. Like something's rotten in Denmark. Something's rotten in Nevada. Can the U-2 sit still in the sky? <coughs> no. No. Make right angle turns in the middle of the sky? No. Take off from nothing? No. The U-2 can't do any of those things. You hear that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The U-2 can't do any of those well, things. Well, that's not the explanation, okay? Yeah. It's not the U-2. Get the, get the hell away from me, you little monsters. You're bothering me. Uh -huh. It's W.C. Fields. He don't like kids. Oh, by the way, the uh, the inductee this week into the uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame, which is McDonald's, uh, uh -huh. uh, issuing the um, issuing uh, um, their employees uh, J.P. Morgan Chase debit cards as, uh, as a way of, I, I assume, extracting their pay. Do you think... This is the way these McDonald's employees have to get their money, and every time they do it, they have to pay a fee. McDonald's is also guilty because they don't want to pay a higher minimum wage. And and all you see is McDonald's franchises. You see the McDonald's people outside there, pack there, protesting. There's McDonald's all over the place. Yeah, they don't mm -hmm. want to. They um, they're definitely making making money hand over fist. And uh, you know, and yes, by yeah. the way, they, the McDonald's hamburger is only a fraction beef. Now, getting so back there's to a the, lot of uh, hamburger helper, mysterious, uh, uh, unhealthy, and pink slime. Perhaps, not perhaps, toxic hamburger helper in in a McDonald's hamburger. So shame on you, Hall of Shame, J.P. Morgan Chase, of course, and McDonald's Corporation. Now I don't like them. I never. Getting did. back to the Big Mac, going up four hundred percent by the stupid politician that said that yeah. uh, if they raise the minimum wage. Lies. They tried that in Australia. And it only raised the cost of a Big Mac by six cents. And guess what the minimum wage is what? in Australia? $16 an hour? $14 and change. 14 and change. Well, that's probably the accurate minimum wage Maybe in Australia, but you based know what the accurate women minimum wage should be in the United States? Based on the cost of living. Based on my figures. What? Twenty-eight dollars and change. If you're if you're taking into account the cost of rents. No, you don't do it that way. Or mortgages, it's uh, groceries. You mean in again? Again, you're 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 saying that they should care about you. They don't. What the fuck is this? Well, it ain't Billy. It better not be him. He, isn't it funny that last Saturday, some some prick called at the same time? What if it's not a prick? Somebody trying to sabotage our show, progressive discussions. Well, they know that actually we. See, they did the same thing. I hear somebody. Well, that means well, it's a sale. Well, then you must have. Maybe for someone else than William J. Eisenhower. You know what? Anyway, let's take a break. Yeah, let's it's take time a break for, here. It's time for the uh, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And we will be back.